as he woke me up, he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. And he started. A lot of folk got up, but they didn't start on their way. Hey, the Lord is blessing me. It's blessing me. You can sing that. If it's a personal testimony right now. But I can tell you one thing that the Lord is blessing me. The Look at your neighbor and tell him he's blessing me. He's blessing me. Right now. Oh, right now. Shake somebody's hand next to you and tell him the Lord. The Lord is. Tell him he's blessing me. No, I had some trouble this week, but he's still blessing me. Right now. In spite of what I'm going through, in spite of what I've been through, all oh, right now, because he woke me up this morning. He could have cut me off, but he woke me up this morning. He let me see a new day and started me on my way. Didn't deserve it, but I'm thanking him for it.
just touch your name and tell them I don't mean to get on your nerve. But I just want you to know, I don't know how you feel about it. But I got everlasting life. How about you? Say thank you. 
We've been praying all week for this. <laughs> We've been slaying on our face all week that you would show your face. That your anointed would touch somebody who walked through those doors, mind confused, decided not to go any farther. But we thank you that you stopped by and let your anointed rest in this house. So now do what you do best. Heal, save, deliver, set free. Bind the hand of the enemy. That your people might walk in victory. We thank you. We thank you for favor over our life. Favor over our family. Favor over everybody that we stand in the gap for. We give you praise. We don't take this privilege lightly. But we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody, praise him. I don't mean patty cake. I mean really praise him. session right here. This guy, I, I don't want to leave this. I got somewhere to go, but I really don't want to leave this session right here. I prayed all last night at work and this morning when I got home and got on my face and asked God just to stop by the house. He don't stop by everybody's house, but I asked him to stop by this house and touch somebody that may walk through the door that, that don't know what to do tomorrow, don't know what they're going to face next month. I ask God to just step in the room and make his presence known to somebody. Somebody hanging on by a friend. They look good, but the truth be told, they gather. They are wrecked, waiting to happen. I prayed for this. I did. I did. I prayed. I prayed. God, touch your mind, touch your body, touch your family, touch your finances, touch your going out and your coming in. I prayed the Lord bless you so until you didn't know what was going on. God, make you a lender and not a borrower. God, just bless you so until you just confused. You go in the closet and don't know what to put on. He done bless you with so much. You got enough to give away and don't miss a beat.
since the anointing is in the house, I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm gonna ask y'all to pray for me. Sister Renee, come here, baby. Come here. Sister Caldwell, Mother Watkins. My intercessor, Sister Jewel, if she ain't laid in the floor. Sister Watkins, Sister Sister Hammond. y'all surround my sister and, 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 and let me tell you something Tiff, come on I, 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 I want to I tell you something you don't know what folk go through and we the last people need to be passing judgment on anybody because I slip and fall my mistake might not show up like somebody else's but I thank God that we've got some women that love us enough and brothers that love us enough that will go in the den where we are and pick us up and don't care what we look like. But will come in and say, you still belong to us. You might have slipped, but we coming to get you. You might have backslid, but we coming to get you. You might be messed up. We don't care what your hair look like. We don't care what your fingernails look like. We don't care if you got makeup on or not. That's what real love is all about. We like one another when we look good, but do you love me when I look a mess? And so I, I want you to, I want them to pray for this sister. I want them to pray the demons is trying to attack her because we're canceling their assignment on her family, on her household, on her surrounding. Her relationships are going to change. The devil will not get back in and try to recreate what, they, what God has broke. We bind every hindering spirit, every force that's working against you in the seen world and in the unseen world. We cast out every imagination, every thought that rises up against the name of Jesus. We plead the blood on you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We plead the blood on the appetite, on the desire, on the choices, on the old mind, on the old New mind, new strength, new determination, new vision, new appetite, new zeal, determination. Christ. Seem like it ain't working. The devil is alive. Greater is he that's in 
tried standing on my own, it didn't work. Tried depending on friends, that fell through.
standing in the gap for one another. So this is, you need to be praying. This, you, may, you don't have to understand. You just need to pray. You don't have to judge. Just pray.
James, first chapter. James, James, first chapter. James, first chapter. James, one. Them trials come on every hand. I thank you for the trials. I feel like the of trouble, joy in the midst of trouble. Jesus, half-brother James is the writer of this epistle. And James did not believe in Jesus' ministry until after his death and resurrection. But I'm so glad that James left on record for the church that there are going to come some temptations in your life. Not if 
So trials come, but when they come, not they might show up, but they will show up. And somebody in here today can attest that I've been through some storms and I've been through some battles and I've been through some fires, but the Lord has kept me. Uh, the New Living Translation puts it this way, dear beloved brothers and sisters, when trouble comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested or tried, your endurance has a chance to grow. Because when you go through trials and tribulations, you have an opportunity to see God at his greatest work. I know some of us in here today have been through some stuff that we didn't know how we were going to come out. But by the grace of God in prayer, he kept us. He saved us. He, he redeemed us. While other folk didn't want us to make it, God saw us out. While other folk were plotting against us, God rescued us out of the hand of the enemy. Some of us have been in some pits and God came in the pit and brought us out of the muck and the mire and clay. Hallelujah. And I thank God that because of Jesus, I don't have to stay in what I was in. He has died that I might be free. He says, my brothers and, and, and my sisters counted all joy. And I told you the other week uh, that, that when my sinuses kicked in, I, I said to myself, I said, I hate this season. And before I could really get those words out of my mouth, uh, the, I heard the Lord said, in everything, give thanks. And we have a tendency when things don't go our way, we want to curse the situation or curse what we're going through. But the Bible says in everything. Everything, not in some things give thanks. We like to give thanks in thanks in things that work for us. But anybody in here know that in everything you ought to thank God. In the good times and in the bad times and things that work in your favor and things that don't work in your favor. Some of you in here ought to know that you ought to thank God for the enemy that's plotting against you, for the neighbors that digging ditches against you. Because when you learn how to thank God in the midst of your trial, God has an opportunity to build your faith and your relationship in Jesus Christ. I need some folk in here right now to give God some thanks for what you're going through. Look here, thank you for what you've been through. Thank you for what you're going through. And thank you for bringing you out. I, one other uh, four things I want you to know. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go. I want you to know that you ought to count it all joy. Why do you need to count it all joy? <sighs> because trouble can't last some ways. It's just a temporary situation. It, it's not permanent. Trouble comes to test your faith. God does not tempt. God tests. The devil tempts. God tests. He really wants to show you, Emily, how strong you really are in him. So he allows certain situations to come on your front door. Knock on your address. Show up on your job. So you can let the world know that you really are a saint of his. Yes. See, it's one thing to stand up in church and sing and clap and rock and know all the songs. But it's another thing to have to walk that testimony that you've been jumping and shouting out about Monday through Saturday. It's easy to come up in here and say, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but when mess hits your family and when it hits your house and when it hits your job, can you still tell God, I'll thank you no matter what I'm going through. Job put it like this, though you slay me yet will I trust you. God giveth and the Lord taketh away. You gotta learn how to say bless your name. Bless your name in the good times. Anybody in here had to bless him in the bad times? Bless your name. I will bless the Lord at all times. Not sometimes, but I need some folk in here to bless him right now. I'll bless him for what I'm going through. 
David said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come. That's why I want you to know the trouble can't last always. Listen, you've got to have the right attitude in your trial. Your attitude reflects your altitude. If you have a nasty or a funky or a, a, a dis, uh -huh, I just want to, yeah. If your attitude ain't right concerning what you're going through, watch this, you'll be in it longer than anticipated. Because the purpose of God is not to break you, but to mature you to a place that when you get in the next test, you'll say, he brought me out of that one. I can get out of this one. He saw me out last year. Oh, this is just another opportunity for me to trust God just a little bit more. Anybody in here know that he brought you out before? And when the next test came, you said, oh, I got this one. I may have to cry a little bit, but I got out of the last one praying on my face. And I'll get out of this one praying on my face. It gives you an opportunity to see God because the devil is the only one that wants to see you fall. It's here unless it for this cause was the Son of God manifested. See, it's just certain scriptures you ought to just have in your, you know, in your clip. If you got a clock, there's you got them man eating bullets. Then when you shoot it, it opens up and tears up whatever it is. Let me talk to these folk over here. When you, cause y'all ain't got no clocks, I see that. But, but, but if you got those man-eating bullets, when you shoot it, mushrooms, and it opens, tears up everything. So you ought to just have some scripture that when the enemy tries to come against you, you just pull out your weapon. And you just start shooting in his direction. No weapon form against me shall prosper. For this cause was the Son of God manifested. He overcame the world by the words of this. You just start shooting the word of God at the enemy. You ain't got to fight nobody. Just shoot the word at him. You ain't got to cuss your boss out. Just start shooting the word at him. You ain't even got to roll your eyes. Just put the word on them. When the, you think I made that up? When, when the, the devil came after Jesus, Jesus said, it is written. Yes, sir. All you got to do is put the word, because the devil don't like the word. When you start putting the word on him, he get nervous. Because he can't handle the word. And that's why he tries to keep a lot of us ignorant. Yes. Teach, Master. Teach. He finds everything to throw in your way so you can't make it the Bible class. You can't make it to Sunday school. You're too exhausted to pick up the word, to find out what the word has for you. Can I tell you that the word of God is your lifeline, baby? It'll either make you or it'll break you. Teach, Pastor. Yes, sir. Teach. Trouble. Trouble can't last away. See, when you got the word of God in you, Yes. And on you. Uh -huh. see, you got to know what word to use. That's it. That's it. You just can't use any word for any situation. You got to find the right word that fits that situation and apply it to it. So when the doctor comes in and says it doesn't look good, you got to understand the, 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 the sense to say, by his stripes. I'm here. I'm covered in his blood. It don't look like the baby's coming out right. You need to know how to put your hand on your own stomach and say in the name of Jesus Christ, twist. Flip. Yes. 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 Yes.
Talk, 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 talk. That's what I want you. That's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand this. You may not shout today, but you shout next week. But but I want you to understand this: that you got to learn how to have joy in the midst of your trial. And the devil does not want you to have joy. And I told you over and over again, and I think I'll park right here and tell you again: there is a difference, Nate, in joy and happiness. Let me put it this way. The ladies will understand this. There's a difference in good makeup and the makeup that you get at the dollar store. There's a difference between, let me put it this way, homemade greens and glory greens. There's a difference between cornbread that you make from scratch and then Jiffy Mix. Y'all got that one, didn't you? So you, you, you got to understand that there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is based on conditions. How the weather is, you can be happy. How, what's going on around you, you can be happy. Uh, but let me tell you, who likes you, you can be happy. But see, even if don't nobody likes you, if you got joy, it don't matter what's going on. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And as long as I got Jesus on the inside, I ain't stuck what you think about me. Because I know who died for me. And since he died for me, that's all that makes a difference. Don't you know you can be flat, broke, and still have joy? And God will make somebody put a hundred dollar bill in your hand, and you'll be trying to figure out, and you'll shout and still praise God as if ain't nothing happened. Cause you learn how to praise Him when you were broke, and now that you got three dollars, you praise Him still. Your praise is not fluctuated by what's going on. It's fluctuated. It's done by your relationship. If the house don't pay, I'm still going to praise it. If we ain't got no food in the house, I'm still going to praise it. Because he ain't going to let me go without. Because I trust him and I belong to him. And he belong to me. And I got a covenant with him. And he's responsible for taking care of his own. Newsflash, I'm not a bastard child. I got a daddy. His name is Jesus. You might not know who your daddy is, but my daddy sits home. He sits high. And he looks up. And I'm not trying to throw off on nobody. You might not know who your daddy is, but Jesus specializes in foster children. And he'll take you in the family and he won't treat you like a stepchild. He'll treat you like you have been there all the time. Trouble won't last. That's why you ought to have joy. Because you got to understand that the test is only to test your faith, not to wipe you out. See, you got to go through something. Because if you don't go through nothing, you won't have a testimony to tell somebody else, I once was where you was. I know what it looked like to be a hot mess because that was me a few days ago. But look at me now. I know I ain't all that, baby, but I'm so farther than where I came from. That, that's that's why. That's why you can't sit in church and judge folk and say, oh, she's not looking good. Oh, he ain't looking good. Because you don't know what they had to do to pull it together. When, 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 you, second, when you fall, it's not if you fall. Because I might not fall this year. My fall might not be the next year. But when you fall into temptations, God has already promised to make a way of escape. The devil wants to trap you and have you fall in a pit, but God has already got an exit sign for you. 
when you fall into sin, God has already promised to protect you. God has already promised a safe arrival because his son has shed his blood that you can arrive safely. Isaiah 41 and 10 puts it like this. It says, fear not, for I am the Lord thy God and with thee. Do not be dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, and I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. God is just saying through Isaiah, God says, I got you. I know that you're having some setbacks, and I know that the enemy is trying to take you out, and I know that folk don't understand what you're going through because they don't understand what they're going through. But God is just want you to know today, I got you. I got you in my hand. I know the very hair that's on your head. I know when you came into this world, and I know when you're going to depart. You got to understand that it doesn't matter what the enemy sends your way. As long as you keep your hand in the Lord's hand, everything will be all right. And I know that even when we slip and our hand is not there, God will still hold us. Don't act like you ain't ever slipped away from God. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, when you pass through the water, I'll be with you. When you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, anybody ever been through a fire? He says, you won't be burned. Neither will the flame kindle upon you. There's some stuff that has been designed to kill some of us. And I, I thank God I look over my life, what I've been through and what I've had to experience. And I thank God that I'm still breathing while other folk are dead laying in the cemetery. God has covered my life. It ain't that I've been so good or I was slick or I was that cool. But God had plans for me. And I thank God with my own silly self, he watched out for me. Because I was a fool. I, I messed up some stuff. I planned to mess up some stuff. But he covered me. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, he covered me too. He, he co I promise you. Thank you, God. I thought I wrote the book on how to get over. But, but, but God delivered me. I, I ain't the only one in here being a trickster. I, I ain't the only one who knew how to be cool and knew how to smooth talk. But I thank God that he took that and made something wonderful out of it. He took my talk from my talk to his talk. Oh, what a wonderful change. Come out of in here know you been changed. I want you to know you ought to have joy in the midst of your trial because he will never fail you. He has a covenant with you. A covenant is an agreement. It's a contract. It's better than your contract that you have with your mortgage company or with your leasing agreement or with the car that you're renting or you're buying. You can default on it and they will come get it. But God is not a covenant breaker. Because even when we default, God steals God. Even when we default on our prayer life, he's still God. Even when we don't feel like lifting our hands, giving in worship, because we got some stuff going on and we allow the enemy to suck our praise out of us, he's still God. Somebody in here know he won't fail you. He won't leave you. He won't walk out on you. God is right there by your side. Number one, I told you. you trouble can't last always. When you fail, the Lord promised to keep you. Third, he won't fail you. And fourth, Jesus is our supreme example. For he is our high priest. He has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but he's been tempted, but without sin. He knows what we're going through. Amen. He knows what we are experiencing, but he's still God. 
He's God in the morning and he's God in the noonday. He's God in the midnight hour. And whatever you go through and whatever trial that tries to attack and zap your joy, God says, I got you. Yeah. Thank you, God. you got to understand that he is right there by your side. Might I submit unto you that whatever you're going through, that God does care for you. God does love you. God is right there by your side. And, and, and James tells us, my brethren and my sisters, that you need to learn to count it all joy. You've got to have joy in the morning. You've got to have joy in the noonday. You've got to have joy in the midnight hour because Jesus is the center of our joy. And the saints ought to learn how to rejoice no matter what the test, no matter what the trial. You've got to have joy in Jesus. My question to you is, are you going to count it joy or are you going to have a pity party? Are you going to count it joy what you're going through? Are you going to sit up and complain? The saints of God need to learn to say that in the midst of whatever I'm going through, God is God and God alone. I have never experienced some stuff that I'm experiencing right now in my life, but God is the same yesterday. God is the same today, and God will be the same forevermore. I'm reminded of the three Hebrew boys who told the king that we won't bow down to your images. We only serve God. It doesn't matter what test we may have to go through. It doesn't matter what fire you put us in. We only go worship God. Well, that sound good. But the Bible says that the king ordered that the furnace be heated up seven times higher than its original state. And the Bible says he commanded that these three Hebrew boys who only worship God, who only pray to God, be thrown into the fiery furnace. And that's what the enemy wants to do through your test and through your temptation. He wants to throw you into the the fire but you don't have to worry because the God I serve he's able to keep you even if you can't keep yourself the God I serve sits high and looks low the Bible says that they threw the three Hebrew boys in but the men that threw them in died first as they were throwing them in it was so hot that they died first the Bible says that they had on their robes they had on all their garments and the Bible says that they were walking around the fiery furnace and the ropes that were tied around their hands to have them bound up had burned off whatever the devil is trying to tie you up with, God will burn it off if you keep your joy in the midst of your trial, the Bible says that the king looked to the fiery furnace and said did we throw in three I see four and the fourth one looks like the son of God the king said oh Shadrach Meshach and Abednego the God you serve he is God I just stopped by to tell somebody when you serve God in the midst of your trial when you serve God in the midst of your test when you serve God in the midst of your trouble when you keep your joy intact God will deliver you out of the fiery furnace God will keep you when other folk walk away from you God will walk by your side God will hold your hand God will stand with you God will walk with you can I get a witness is there anybody in here that know God will walk with you God will talk with you God will stand by you yes he will yes he will yes he will How do you keep your joy? You told me 
pastor about maintaining my joy in the midst of my trouble that sound good but how do I do that the joy of the Lord is your strength and if you ever lose your strength you lose your joy your strength comes in your prayer life if you have a poor prayer life you have little joy if you spend a little time with God you have a little anointing and that's what gives the devil footholds to make his way into whatever you're dealing with you've got to stay prayed up well I ain't got time to pray no you don't have time not to pray this word is the only thing that's going to keep you and stand on your face talking to God and let me tell you this you ain't got to be deep God is not interested in how intelligent or unintelligent you are he just wants to have a conversation with his own children he is looking to hear from you now watch this I know you may not have much to say but I promise you if you get under the shadow of his wing he'll start talking to you Yes, he is. Yes, he is. In any situation. He that dwelleth in the secret of his tabernacle shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you dwell in God, God will let you abide under him. And while you're under him, whatever's over you that's trying to harm you. We'll have to back up or go away because when you cover something, nothing can get through. Because it's got to hit me before it hits you. So that's why I say when we cover one another in prayer, I'm strong enough to cover you. It's got to come through me before it gets to you. So when you abide yes, Lord. under God, yes. oh God, I just heard that. Hallelujah. Some of us don't want to abide under nothing. Hallelujah. That's why you're catching all the hell you're catching now. We want to do what we want to do and how we want to do it. That's why you're having so much trouble. Because cause you, can't, you can't do it your way and be blessed. There was a young gentleman yesterday at work, last night, he was so irate. We normally don't work on Saturday nights, but he was irate. And being in the plant, you have to wear safety glasses. And the boy is six foot four. And he told his supervisor, I'm not wearing them. <coughs> and so she called me, I'm gonna throw him out. I said, he violated his own health and safety, throw him out. You don't even need a committee man for that, just cast him out. And when I walked up on the conversation and saw who it was, I knew the young man. I said, what's your problem? I'm trying to make a statement. I said, no, you acting crazy. I said, because those are your eyes. And we trying to protect you so when you go home, you see your children. We don't want you to just feel them, we want you to see them. So those glasses are for your protection, not mine. All right. Uh -huh. All right. There you go. So you got to follow the rules that are set in order to protect you. You might not like it, you may not want to abide by it, but if you abide by this word, no weapon that the devil tries to hurl in your way can ever prosper. Didn't say it wasn't going to come through, just said it wouldn't prosper. Didn't say it wasn't going to manifest itself and just blow, but it said it wouldn't come to full fruition. I know it is so. 
-hmm. Don't feel good all the time. But it'll work for you. Trouble can't last always. God promised to be with you in whatever you're going through. God will never fail you. And Jesus Christ is our supreme example that he went through his trial. But on the third day, he got up victorious. And I love the way Sean put it all power is in his hand. And since he got all power, the devil has less than all. The doors of the church open. God will give you joy in the midst of your trouble.